As the Mother Church of the Diocese of Cleveland, the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist is a symbol of rich Catholic tradition in Northeast Ohio. From the craftspeople, designers, contributors, and laborers who built it, to those who come for simple worship. Its French Gothic design is awe-inspiring in its complexity and its simplicity. And as we enter in here, we have come to a particular and a wonderful place, an awesome place, and uh, it's the saving love of God here in our midst. Above the right entrance are the figures of St. Peter and St. Paul. Above them, a crucifixion scene featuring the Blessed Virgin and St. John. The three arches at the entrance represent the three persons of the Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Over the doors from the interior of the cathedral are three phrases which translated mean we praise thee, we bless thee, we adore thee. It's saying to the people as you leave here, praise God, bless God, and adore God. And that's what we're about. We come here to be nourished, to worship God, and in turn to go out to the world to bring God to others. The symbolism, first of all, I learned it all here. Um, when you think of uh, ancient Christianity and when you go throughout the history of Christianity, it comes back to this place, not this particular place, but, but you know, to this faith, to this Roman Catholic faith. The altar top, or mensa, is cut from a single piece of marble. It weighs 1,400 pounds. In the middle of the altar front is the figure of a pelican. Legend says in time of need, the pelican fed its young on its own blood. It is an ancient symbol of the Eucharist, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The bishop's chair, known as a cathedra, is a focal point of the sanctuary. Above the cathedra is the coat of arms of Bishop Richard Lennon, the Bishop of Cleveland. The bishop's devotion to Mary and John the Evangelist, who were at the foot of the cross when Jesus died, are themes as well as the bishop's motto. The motto uh, comes from the first epistle of St. John in Latin, which I chose to have it, uh, diligamus nos in vicem, let us love one another. And really, that's what Christ asked us to do. Behind the cathedra, the great wood reredos is the altar's backdrop. It is made of 850 pieces of hand-carved Appalachian oak and is 20 feet wide and rises 27 feet. In the highest niche of the Rarados is a hand-carved image of St. John the Evangelist. Below are statues of the three other evangelists, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Lord be with you. The word of the Lord spoken through the Gospels is heard from the pulpit, or ambo. It is built around the figure of St. Stephen. Stephen was an eloquent preacher. He holds a basket of stones and a palm branch, a symbol of his martyrdom. Because of his preaching, Stephen was stoned to death and is the church's first martyr. On the altar of reservation rests the tabernacle. The tester is above and was commissioned by Bishop Hickey during the 1977 sanctuary renovation. It is symbolic of a pillar of fire, representing God's presence in the Old Testament. The Lady Chapel features a statue of Our Lady above a white marble altar. Directly overhead is the rose window with a dove in its center, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. A fresco covers the wall with a Marian mural, capturing visions of the Annunciation and the Nativity. One band of apostles, another band of angels, and at the top of the arch, the crowning of Mary as Queen of Heaven. The vision of Mary as the Mother of God has inspired mothers for decades. It was a very special place for her. Uh, she'd come down here a lot uh, because it's such an island of peace. On the chapel walls are statues of St. Pius X and Francis Xavier Cabrini, the first naturalized American to be named a saint. Archbishop Hoban had met her and wanted to honor both as he oversaw the reconstruction of the cathedral in 1948. Statues of St. Joseph, St. Anne, and the Christ Child also stand in the Lady Chapel. Visitors to the cathedral continue to be awed. They look up. They look up. Their eyes their eyes go up, and then their eyes just sort of dance around. Oh, they love the cathedral. They love the atmosphere. They love the, the prayerfulness of the place. They love the reverence of the place. They love the mass. They seem to find peace inside. Which shows that people feel that the cathedral is theirs, 
and that the cathedral is a special place in their lives that they bring children to show them this uh, beautiful church. The Sacred Heart Chapel features another fresco, the mural depicting the Book of Revelations, the Apocalypse, symbols of trumpets, seals, vials, the four horsemen, and the woman and the dragon signify the conflict between the forces of good and evil in the world. A statue of John the Evangelist on the west wall observes the apocalypse. Below it is Michelangelo's Pietà. The center of the rose window overhead displays the hand of God. Behind a wrought iron gate is the Resurrection Chapel. Above the gate, a phrase that translates, May they rest in peace. The chapel holds the tombs of the deceased bishops of Cleveland, including the coat of arms of Bishop James Hickey, who later became the Archbishop and Cardinal of Washington, D.C., and is buried there. The relics of St. Christine, a Christian martyr of the third century, lie under the altar of the chapel. The relics were presented to Bishop Schrems in 1928 by Pope Pius XI. These relics are one of only two complete sets of saints' remains in the United States. The whole idea was that uh, it's a reminder that these people are still a part of our family, that they're still with us. The cathedral's baptismal font is placed near the front entrance of the church as a reminder that we have entered the church in Christ through the sacrament of baptism. Over the side entrance doors are the seven sorrows of the Blessed Mother. This had special significance to many. During World War II, the mothers, wives, and sisters of servicemen in combat came to pray before the images. Because of this devotion, it was preserved, intact from the original cathedral during the reconstruction and stands as a symbol of devotion to Our Lady to this day. Above the Superior Avenue entrance to the cathedral is an almost life-sized carving of Christ crucified. The cathedral's bell tower is 185 feet tall, topped by a gold-leafed cross. It was added during the reconstruction, but live bells in the tower were not heard until Christmas Eve Mass 1988 when the bells rang out anew for the first time. Along the cathedral walls are figures of the 14 stations of the cross. Hand carved in Italy from Lindenwood, they trace the journey of Jesus from Pilate's court to Calvary and the tomb. The stained glass windows around the cathedral mirror the Christian liturgical calendar. The scenes are the Annunciation, the Nativity, the Presentation in the Temple, Jesus teaching in the temple, the Last Supper, the Resurrection, the Ascension, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin, and the Redemption through Christ. First and foremost, this is a holy place. It is a consecrated place. It is a place where all the sacraments are celebrated. It is a place that we are on our way to God. Celebrating Mass here every day um, is something that one never gets used to completely.